into that repository. So you're basically making a clone of what's in GitHub to the repository on the uh, Visual Studio Team Services side. And in order to do that, there's several options once you've created a new project. You definitely need to select this, import a new project. And then on the right-hand side, you can see the next screenshot that comes up. Um, but you the, just select the clone URL as you, just as you would if you're cloning this repository um, to your workspace. And then you can either use your uh, password or a um, personal access token. You may already have a personal access token set up if you do this multiple on multiple team projects. And I'm going to show you how to do that because this integration requires personal access tokens both on the Visual Studio BSTS, I'm going to say that for abbreviation, and on the GitHub side. So we'll set both of those up, show you how to set those up, what scopes you need in order for this to work appropriately, and then also where you have to plug those in as variables and give them those permissions. Okay, so the first side, this, these screenshots will show us how to do the personal access token on the GitHub side. Just come up to the corner of your, um, when you're in GitHub, and then you come down to settings, and then you'll get a little um, context menu where you'll go to developer settings and then create a personal access token. Following that, these are the three, at a minimum, uh, scopes that you need. You need to have repo, admin repo hook, and user. If you already have a personal access token set up for some other purpose that has at least this three, you can use that personal access token. You don't have to create a new one, but um, a lot of people don't have personal access tokens until they go and try to do something like this integrate this two way integration. Then, of course, it'll give you, and I have it hashtagged all out, but it'll give you a big, long, I don't know how many characters that is, but it's a whole lot. And if you can memorize all those, you're probably in the wrong <laughs> industry. <laughs> you probably should be clairvoyant or something. But you have to save that because once you are at this screen, if you don't copy that off and put it in a, a, a password safe or somewhere, you will never see it again. Then you'll have to create your access token again. So always be sure to copy that off and be sure you keep mindful of the difference between your GitHub one and your BSTS one because those are, if I've done it where you put the wrong one in the wrong place and nothing works. So be sure um, once you do that. So that's going to be the personal access token on the GitHub side. So we've got that saved off, and we will use that later um, in further in the demonstration. Then you'll also need both on this side a personal access token and a service endpoint on the team services side. So first we're going to set up the access token, and that can be on the um, on your visualstudio.com account, and you just come up to your uh, little ellipse on the side or your, your personal on the side and select security, then personal access tokens, and add, kind of similar to what you did with GitHub. Now on this side, you only need one scope for this particular activity, and it's code. you need full control over code. Again, if you already have a, a path that's set up that has code, you can use that, but it's, it's not needed to have anything else other than just the code. And again, be sure you copy that somewhere because you will never, ever see it again once you go off that screen. These are lessons you learn when you make that mistake like three or four times. You're like, oh, I can't wait to go do that again. Okay, so now you need to, on the BSTS side, you need to set up the service endpoint. And this is going to be what tells, tells us we can go and um, hook up to Git on, from the BSTS side. So it's pretty simple. Um, you have to click the, the little gearbox to get to the admin screens. Of course, you're going to have to have admin. If you don't, you have to be a project administrator. You select services, new services, um, and apparently this is my old slide. <laughs> but it will be selected. I had a new slide that, that was helping Git. Um, but there will be GitHub on the list. And then you um, put the personal access token from the GitHub site in this screen. Be sure it's not the other one. Okay, so now we're going to get into the meat of things. We're going to set up two build definitions in Visual Studio Team Services. One's going to be directional from GitHub to VSTS, and one's going to be the other direction. So I, I've named mine very appropriately so you know which one is which. If you ever have to go in and update your personal access tokens or anything like that, you want to be sure that um, you know uh, what that is. So the first one, um, you're going to say, I want a, a GitHub repository as my, as my source for this. Again, you're just going to put your repository into this box. And for the sake of the demonstration, I've just chosen master, but this can be any branch. So if you had multiple branches you wanted to do the syncing with, if you had an integration branch and a master branch, you could set up build definitions for each one of those. But for the sake of this demonstration, I'm 
really simplifying it, we're just going to connect directly to master. And then you'll have a choice. Um, normally, when you're doing build definitions, to have all of these. Do I want to build a .NET Core project? Blah blah blah. Within this, it's really just a simple one task thing. So we'll just select an empty template so we can add one PowerShell task. So once we do, um, we do have some variables that we need. So this is going to be on the variables screen. You can see it's underlined up there, or the variables uh, tab, I would call that. And you'll call this VSTS personal token. If you call it something else, just be mindful because we're going to use this variable in the, in the task. So if you want to call it Joe's token or something, you want to um, be sure you remember that name. And then I highlight here, this one is a VSTS path. So this is what's going to say it's OK for this, for Marianne to, to check in code on the VSTS. Then the next thing is, how often do you want to trigger it? Well, obviously, this is best if you, in this particular scenario, that you do continuous integration because you want every time something's checked into GitHub, you want to sync it to the list. And again, you choose here that you um, want to do master. Uh, in my scenario, I only have master, but you might have other branches. So you need to be sure you get the right one in your particular um, uh, build definition. So the next tab here is just going to be this is mostly a personal preference thing. You don't have to change this on the options tab, but I like to make it something meaningful because otherwise it's just going to be, um, I think the default is something like the date and the rev, uh, this, this last part of the uh, format. I always like to put the build definition name in there so I know which one is which when you're getting notifications from uh, Visual Studio Online um, or VSTS. You want to be sure you it's not getting duplicate numbers and you don't know which one's which. So I always, as a best practice, give it this naming convention or something similar, and it's not just a date dot one. So you don't know is that the VSTS to get or is it get to VSTS. So that's just a best practice um, suggestion there. And of course, you want it enabled. Uh, this screen you can go back later if you um, in the use case where you're doing this as a temporary bridge while you get users over and trained and that sort of thing. And then you'd want to disable it at some other point, or you may want to pause it. Um, just be mindful that um, if you disable it, then you're going to have a lot of catch up to do and the merges could be a mess. It's probably best to pause it um, and then if you need to come back, because it'll queue up builds and just not launch them. OK. And then here's the guts of it. So it's one simple thing is in a PowerShell task. The way you go add that is on the um, task tab. You'll select the plus sign. And then you'll have a bunch of choices. And if, to narrow those down, just type in the PowerShell in the search box and um, select it from the list. And then we'll have a task where I've kind of given the guts of it at the top up here um, so that you uh, can copy paste it. because won't be able to copy paste it from the screenshot. But the important things here uh, is you, that is literally the, the whatever you named your variable. So in our case, VSTS personal access token. And then in brackets is anything that's variable to you. So you'd have your, in my case, the, the dx.visualstudio.com, but yours might be joe.visualstudio.com, whatever that um, VSTS account. And then what you've named your project on the VSTS side. And um, the rest is just um, no variable. It's exactly as shown here on the screen. OK, so that is um, the GitHub to VSTS side. We're going to do a second build definition that's going to go the other direction. So very same, same concept. You create new build. But this time, instead of choosing GitHub, you're going to choose the VSTS Git side. And then choose your um, repository, whatever you've named it. I name them the same on both sides because it just makes it easier, but they don't have to be named the same. But just it's easier to, if you've got a lot of this going on, then you don't have to remember, oh, it's this on the VSTS side and it's something else on the GitHub side. So I just give them the same name. And again, be sure you select the right branch or you're going to mess things up. Also on this one, empty process because it's just going to have that one task in there. So we don't want to get a big elaborate um, uh, template in there. So we'll just choose an empty process. And this time, we want to create, a, uh, put in the GitHub personal access token. So we'll name this GitHub personal token, or Joe's GitHub token, whatever you want to call it. And this one, you need to be sure you put the GitHub, the one you created in the first part, not the second part. All right, so very similar screens here. 
where we're going to enable the continuous integration and select the master branch. Again, my best practice, give it a meaningful name to you so that things don't get confusing. Be sure that it, by default it is enabled, but you want to um, enable it. And you can come back to the screen later if you need to disable it at some later uh, point. And you create a PowerShell task again. This one is slightly different. So what this is going to do is you got to pull to make sure you're at the um, at the tip for the head of master before you push your changes over to GitHub. The other one you didn't have to do that because you were creating a remote, which automatically does that gets you the latest tip. So this one um, you can say we're going to pull and then push our changes in. Same kind of thing here. This is literally GitHub personal access token or whatever variable you set up in the variables tab. And then this is going to be your um, uh, github.com slash whatever your count is. Uh, in my case, it's MA Jaeger 22. So apparently there's another couple of MA Jaegers out there. <clears throat> okay, so any questions about the, the build definitions themselves or why we choose to use the GitHub? Okay, well, so I could, like I said, my, my thing is not very long. And we'll go and uh, visit the uh, build definitions just so you can see them. We'll just review them real quick and what they look like. Um, what we're then going to do is prove that this works. So I'm going to make a very simple, silly commit uh, directly to master on the GitHub side, and we'll watch it sync up to the VSTS side. And then we will do the opposite. We'll make a commit on the VSTS side and watch it sync over to GitHub. Does anybody have questions before I do that? Yep, you can. You can't. That is one of the use cases you'd want to use it. I, I think more practically, it's probably when you're converting from GitHub to VSTS, uh, you're not going to be able to do all your developers in the blink of an eye. Right? It's more. I mean, we have two developers at VDX, so that might be practical for us. But even a team of of ten or twenty, not everybody. Somebody's going to be out sick or something. So you want to bridge that gap. And then it. You may want to stay in GitHub completely and use features on the VSTS side, like builds, releases, work item tracking, things like that. So there's a number of reasons you might want to do this. Okay, so we will, well, and we already talked about questions, so let me put up in here. And somehow I have to, ah, okay. You guys can see that now. And I don't really need to Skype for business. Okay, so the first thing, let's just look quickly at our two um, build definitions. We've all obviously had a couple, I've tried this a couple times. Hopefully it goes as planned um, today, but we'll, uh, we can always look at the his history. What's interesting to note uh, in that I've done this uh, a number of times to demo is that your commit hashes are the same on both sides. So a, a, for a brief time, once you've checked in while it's syncing, those are gonna be out of sync. So, so look here, we have the, the 791 and the 791. So we'll come back here and watch this as it happens when we go over to GitHub and uh, make our change. So I've done a lot of silly things in this um, uh, scenario. So I'm just going to go ahead and go to code and make sure to be able to edit this guy. And so we'll say this change was on GitHub, or I can't type when people are watching me, um, Global Azure Bootcamp. So we'll just go straight away to commit. And I don't, this is not best practice. You should use pull requests and approvals and all that. But for the sake of demonstration, we're just going to commit directly to master. But do not, do not attempt this at home. should go pretty quick. So we'll commit them super quick, and then we'll jump over here and uh, do a refresh just to see it launch. Okay, so you can see we went to in progress, and oh, where did it go? Okay, so it went to the top, and then we'll watch what's happening here. And see the hash numbers are out of sync right now. What's interesting, and what I did not expect to happen when I did this very first time, 
is it's going to launch a GitHub uh, to VSTS build, and then it'll recognize that as a check on the on the VSTS side. It'll launch that build, so it does it does a full circle, and then it goes, oh, we're in sync. Our hashes are in sync. Stop, stop. Them. So it just does that one loop. I was very surprised by that, and it made me have a little minor panic attack when it first happened. I'm like, I didn't do anything on the VSTS side, but it does make sense. Oh, it did have that commit, so it needs to make sure the GitHub side has. So it's pretty quick. Um, obviously, it does just does that little task. So we'll go back over to builds, and now we can see what I was talking about, where it's launching. It launched the VSTS to GitHub site too, even though they're already in sync. But it just needs to register that oh, I'm already in sync with that. So that will go pretty quickly, hopefully. And we'll go over to the code, and we will show that that little um, change is still in progress. Oh, it's waiting. Must be a lot of people building on a Saturday afternoon in hosted team services. Oh, there it goes. Yeah, and it, you can see the useful information in the logging. That's what, um, for, for people that didn't catch where I'm redirecting at the end of those, um, those PowerShell statements, I'm redirecting standard out and standard error to the host, so it'll all come here because you can. I don't know how what your experience is with um, TFS builds, but you can download those log files and, and review them, and, or come back to this, these individual tasks at any point and look at those logs. So, so that's what um, why we redirect that. And then we want to go and prove. Okay, we'll go on the um, my code tab here. You can see. Um, look at the history because that's probably pretty interesting there. See that I just made that. Um, I did some other branching stuff on uh, Thursday, but you can see that commit happened over here and the readme was updated. And the MA Jaeger 22 ones are the ones that come from GitHub and, and Marianne Jaeger comes from the BST side, BSTS side. So if we look at the contents, let's make sure, do I really have that last line in there? Did it really, really go in there? And oh, look there. Is there anybody else that thinks GAB is like Great American Beer? Oh, really? It's Global Azure Food Challenge. That's <laughs> anyway, I digress. All right, so let's see it happen on this side. And since we've got the file open, let's just mess with the same file that really doesn't do a whole lot. Hello. I guess I highlighted that. Great American Beer <laughs> Conference. <laughs> oh, and how do you spell conference? Uh, mm, whatever. <laughs> I can't spell all of a sudden. <laughs> S-E, con, converse, no. Whatever, thingy. <laughs> so we're again committing directly to master. Don't ever, ever do that. Make good comments. A responsible citizen and also while I'm on the topic you do want to integrate work items with every check-in that's very helpful but we're not going to do that today so we'll go commit on this side and pop over quickly to um, the builds and watch okay. I'll click as fast as I think I do and you can see that the Visual Studio Team Services to GitHub one would launch as one would expect We'll go watch this happen because it gives us some interesting logs. If, of course, if you do have an error for some reason, it would be in the logs here. Um, so it's also always kind of nice to watch. And it's already done because I went too fast. So what if I wanted to see, oh, PowerShell script, you can just click over here and see what, what happened during that step. I'll give you the little um, uh, dialogue of what went on. And this also then is going to launch the other side. Just to make sure everything's in sync, it'll come full circle. So we'll launch that one real quick. And this one went faster than we could actually get. 
um, that you can see down here. Let's just look at the PowerShell script. That's what we really care about. And oh, everything is up to date, of course. So just uh, to prove that I'm not somehow doing some magic trickery, we'll go back over here and look at the um, code. I just go back here to refresh. Let's just look at the history because that's also interesting. Updated the readme, and then we'll look at the readme and see if this will refresh it. And this is not the great American beer thingy comes over on the GitHub site. All right, so I did promise that this would be a lot less than 45 minutes. So who has questions? Anyone? Yeah. Not a, it's a, not a different commit. The second one in the round robin actually doesn't do a commit. It says, oh, I'm already sync in sync. So you'll see, yeah, it, it's just to, to confirm, oh, I'm in sync. And it, you'll notice in the log file, it says everything up to date. So you won't see, um, let's go back and look at the history just to um, demonstrate that. Uh, that go? Um, when you look at this history on, on, we'll look at both sides. Where's my history button on this guy? Let's go back. Um, so you notice in this history, we had our commit, and then we had the one that came from VSTS. So we did the one on this side and the one on the other side. There wasn't multiple, like there were four builds, but only really two commits. So yeah, that a lot of, lot of fluff or junk. Yeah, it, it, it's not that way. So you can see here that on this side, it was the one ending in A32 and F3. So if we go look on the um, VSTS side and look at the history of this guy, you can see the same thing. My commits 2F and um, well, this does it in a different, I think there's more characters here. <laughs> I think this tracks more, but it is the same. It's 934, we'll look from the front up to the back, 93464F3. And nine three four six four s three. Oh, the the VSTS shows one more number of the hash. So I don't know the those of you that use Git, it also has has big old long hashtag commit numbers. So obviously that's one difference. It's only going to show seven characters on the GitHub side and eight on the VSTS side. So look from the front, not the back. I'm used to looking at the last ones to make sure they match. Any other questions? Oh, okay. Well, we'll we'll take turns. <laughs> Okay. So would all would would we be of any interest to at least pull up the stuff to use it in a build? build? Absolutely. You wouldn't use this exact task, but you, you would use that service endpoint. So what you can do there is you can let's so let's say you want to do a .NET core build out of what you have in GitHub and you want to leverage the build services out of VSTS. Is that what you're that, that's kind of the same? Um, because it's right mm -hmm. right so you can it is in the same place on the github so you could see a full history on github but you you do that service endpoint so so we do have time i can just show you real quick here um when you were doing a new let's pretend like we're going to set up a new um build definition and of course you wouldn't add the task that does the syncing um well i guess you would have that build maybe you don't have to do that um just see how that adds. I'm, I'm like thinking out loud here. Sorry, because um, I've seen this where you do use the service endpoint, and then you don't really have to do um, the additional. So selecting this on the on your very initial um, setup of a build. So if you're going to do a .NET core compile and you want to deploy it, do create a web deploy package, whatever. And that's probably what your .NET people are. Is that we can do this all in VSTS. You don't have to do the, the syncing part because this automatically does it. That's the it's doing a clone basically. So it says um, it, it might technically be a fork, but clone or fork or something gets you that code. So you really have the check-ins happening on the GitHub side. You would never check anything in on the other side, right? 
So you do this here and it's see how it's asking for, well, what repository do you want? Um, you gotta go pick one. And I actually, it already um, managed on GitHub. Um, okay, here it is. See how it already did this authorization um, because I have, this is my service endpoint. So that's gonna do the authorization to GitHub to pull that code over and you don't have to do the syncing piece, but then you can just say, okay, now I have this code. What do I wanna do with it? I wanna build it, I wanna label it, I wanna you know, associate the build with some um, work items, all that stuff, you do that right in here. So it's not, you don't have to do the task, but that same um, service endpoint will do that. Too. Okay, yeah, instead of me, yeah, you, because, um, I think it still has to be a user, uh, a technically like an Active Directory user if you're using Azure Active Directory, but you can set up those um, uh, personal access token opportunities. And you can, there's also other authentications you can use. Um, you can use like a SSH key and stuff. I chose to use the pad. So you can use SSH keys as well. Yeah, right. Yeah, and I and when you say best practice, it is always to do that as a service account and not an individual person. Because then you have somebody like me that has ultimate access to everything, and then I win the lottery and I'm not going to work here anymore. Then you have to go and pull me out of it. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Did I have? I thought I saw a hand in the back. Maybe I was dreaming, starting to see things. Jason, did you say something? Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realize that we wouldn't be able to hear that. All right. Okay. <laughs> sorry about that. Didn't even occur to me. Any more questions? If you have questions from the other room, you could just run over here and ask them real quick, and then I'll repeat them. Because we have, what do we got? Like, are we on schedule? How many more minutes do we have until the next? Five. Five minutes. So no other questions from either here or the other room? Awesome. Thank everybody for their time, and hopefully this will be useful to someone. <laughs>